So next we have Blair Schiff. It's me. <laughs> Blair. So um, Blair went to Emerson and um, you joined Zeta in 2004, correct? Yeah, in the spring of 2004, I was, I had like a weird transis, transitory participation in Emerson. I was there for a semester, then I joined my second semester uh, for Zeta, and then my third semester, I went to the Castle, which is a study abroad program in the Netherlands, and then I transferred. <laughs> yes. And so Blair transferred to the University of Texas in Austin, and you graduated in 2007. And did you have a broadcast journalism major at both schools? Yeah, when I was at Emerson, one of the reasons I actually chose Emerson is because I wanted to do sports broadcasting. And at the time, they were one of the few universities that had a sports broadcasting track. And so I was like, oh, let's go there. And they have, you know, professional sports as well as some collegiate sports. So I could cover, you know, obviously at the time, Emerson had um, very few sports themselves. And so that was probably not the arena that I'd be practicing in um, and have a little bit higher of a level. So I was excited at that opportunity. So that's actually why I went to Emerson specifically. And then when I transferred to UT, it's because Emerson actually dropped the sports broadcasting program. Got it. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, that's why I was here. So <laughs> I left. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, chase your dreams, as y'all were saying earlier. Um, and, you know, in-state tuition is really cool. So that wasn't upsetting either. Yeah. And so now you are a senior video producer. Tell us more about that. Yeah. So I actually got this job pretty recently. I work for Fox Business, which is uh, like a branch of the Fox News division, um, but it's mostly focused on business news. So it's way less politics, uh, which is great in my book. So I focus mostly on like not boring stuff, not like stocks and dividends. It's more so focused on how to increase financial literacy and how to help people kind of just navigate the world. Uh, we talk about literacy specifically a whole lot. And so I do a lot of video series that's helping people understand how much they should save in their 401k or, you know, how do I save in general? And like, how much do I need in a retirement fund? Because like, no one tells you that stuff. <laughs> so I do a lot of stuff with that. And then I also do a video series with CEOs. So I've interviewed like Charles Schwab, for instance, uh, the recent CEO of John Hancock, which is headquartered in Boston, um, a lot of up and ups like that. But I try to get them to just talk about finances like they're talking to a normal person instead of just investors. So once again, hearkening back to making people understand how to manage their money better and not using too much jargon so it's actually approachable. So I'll shoot those, we edit them, we package them and release them on digital. They usually coincide with a written article that I write to kind of correspond and house the video. So it's a little easier to find also. And so this job is based in New York and you've been in New York for quite a bit, right? Yeah, it's, not, it, it's crazy. I mean, we were talking earlier, I can't believe how time flies. Um, I moved here from, I moved to New York City from Denver uh, where I was for five years. And now I'm coming up on uh, past three and a half years now here, uh, which is just mind boggling. I can't believe it's been that long, uh, but yeah. I love it. And so, and so what, um, backing up a little bit, take us through kind of what you've been up to since you've graduated um, and how you got to where you are now. Sure. So um, after I graduated from UT, or actually I should say a month before, um, I started having a pretty major panic attack, like all good seniors of like, what on earth am I going to do with my life? Oh my gosh, like, how do I even go through it? And I was actually going to go to law school. I took the LSAT. I applied to law schools. It was like, I was going to do it. I wanted to be a sports agent, actually. Uh, so that's what I was going to do. And I actually had applied to journalism jobs as well while I was applying to law schools and kind of just, for lack of a better term, left it up to God. I was like, if I'm supposed to go to law school, I'll go to law school. If I'm not, like, I'll get a journalism job. And I was very lucky. I got a job with the Austin American Statesman, which is the newspaper in Austin. And ironically, writing about a bunch of stocks and dividends and portfolios. And like, I didn't know what I was talking about, but I was a very good Googler. And so I wrote about that. And then they realized I was young and probably went to concerts. So they had me start <laughs> writing about up and coming bands. Cause as you're probably well aware, Austin has a huge music scene. 
Uh, so I would go out on like Friday nights or Saturday nights and review these bands that no one knew of. And then because of my sports broadcasting background, I also did a lot of stringer reports for high school football, which is pretty much a second religion in Texas. So I did, when, by the time I left the newspaper, I was writing for three separate sections, um, which is insane. Um, and they did replace me with three people. So that's a good lesson in life. Um, but I, I really miss broadcast. I, and also newspapers were really sad back then. Uh, 2007 and 8 was a rough time for everyone economically and it was just a lot of layoffs, a lot of newspapers closing and I didn't like the feeling that I got every time they called an impromptu meeting of the staff. It was just this impending cloud of doom always and I mean like I get choked up because it was really really scary and I realized oh I need to go like get out of this situation so I right. went over to the broadcast side and I worked for the NBC affiliate in Austin I was a web person for them so digital production and I actually randomly started talking to one of the up and ups of the parent company that owned my station and he believed in me and so he promoted me to a digital EP position at 25, which was smart yet also dumb, uh, <laughs> and in Albuquerque. So I picked up my bags, moved to New Mexico, and was there for 365 days until I realized that was probably not the city I wanted to live in long term. And that's when I tried really hard to get to Denver, and I was able to get there. And I did digital stuff for them as well. I, I was just a senior digital producer there, so I didn't like run a team. I was just more seasoned. And then I realized I kind of hit my top, you know, I'd kind of leveled out and I didn't see any upward mobility in that area. And my then boyfriend, now husband and I kind of just sat down and we're like, we want to move to New York. Let's like see if it works. And we kind of rolled the dice and I got a job. And then two weeks later, after I got my job offer, we were living in New York. Wow. That, yeah, it happens like that sometimes. Um, so tell us a little bit more about how you're involved with national council um how you got involved with national council and because you're currently co-president right now and at one point you were the only person in that role um so kind of take us through how you decided to join national council and um uh, up until this point yeah i mean everyone marissa can speak to this too um i'm pretty ocd and i don't really take no for an answer and i like challenges so when i decided to transfer to ut i was really sad that i was going to miss zeta you know that was the thing i really missed the most uh because that was what i felt was the best part of my emerson experience and i realized oh i should just start a chapter so i did and so i started a chapter at ut and it lasted for a good bit of years, and then it just fizzled because sometimes that's how it goes, um, which is stinky, but that's what happened. And I think because of my leadership there and founding the chapter and then subsequently hosting a national convention there, actually, I got to know National Council already on kind of an advisory to other campus chapters, and they realized that I should probably get involved. So my first role that they asked me to join on was secretary, which is the best national council position because you pretty much just type. And it's like super low pressure. And so I joined and I was a quick typist. And then it was actually, I think it was Mar Maria, I can't remember who asked me, but someone asked me to be a VP so I could help, you know, campus chapters. And I was like, oh, I'll do that. Sure, no problem. And then Alina contacted me. She's like, hey, would you like to, you know, maybe work on presidency? I was like, yeah. And then we co-led for a bit. And then Alina got super busy. I mean, you already heard from her. She's insanely busy. And so I took the reins and drove the ship for a good bit. And I wanted to make sure while in National Council, we reinvigorated a lot of the campus chapters. I wanted to make sure some more formed. And we were lucky enough to do that. I still have this beautiful goal of more professional chapters or at least some sort of tie after you graduate, uh, which I know Marissa can take on head on. And honestly, once I met Marissa, I was like, oh, great. Like she's totally seceding because <laughs> uh, I, I knew I could leave it in her capable hands. And there's so many great Zetas out there like that um, that maybe don't even know that they can be involved and it doesn't have to necessarily be National Council. Uh, but I'm excited also, just like Alina spoke of, I'm excited to step back and let someone else take the wheel because um, 
I don't ever want Zeta to feel authoritarian. And I've been in, in charge, for lack of a better term, for a really long time. And I want someone with like a fresher vision, uh, but also the love of Zeta to take it to new heights. That's awesome. Um, so I know we kind of uh, heard about it a little bit from Marissa earlier, um, but tell us your experience with any parallels or similarities to your professional life now um, with your time during the membership. Oh my gosh. Uh, well, I mean, echoing what everyone said, pledging is a uh, soul searching experience. And I do think whenever I want to complain about something, it grounds me. And I already kind of have that thought process in my head. You know, it's, I always joke when people are like, oh, it's the worst day ever. I'm like, really? Because like, Poland got invaded once, like that was pretty bad. Like your day's not that bad. <laughs> I'm just like in a constant state of like, you need to calm yourself. Like it's not, it's not really that big of a deal. It's just a bad day. And like, that's okay. We can get over it or like drink some wine, but like, we're all going to be fine that next Tuesday. You know? Yeah. Um, your day is not that bad. Um, so I think seeing and sharing so many different experiences and getting to know people, I honestly wouldn't have known at Emerson. It's, it's not a big school, uh, but there because the programs are so small and so tight knit, you very rarely get to know people outside of your program. And that's true of a lot of schools. I mean, even transferring to UT, which is one of the largest universities in the country, like our program for broadcast is very, very small. And I probably wouldn't have known anyone outside of that program had I not done any sort of activities outside of it. So I think it taught me a lot of how to make friends with people that are. Uh oh, your sound's cutting out. Sorry, can you hear me at all? Okay. All right, cool. So yeah, it taught me how to deal with people that are very different than me and work with them and also enhance their skills, you know, things that they wanna get better at and kind of bring out the best in people. And I think I've always been managerial in my viewpoints in general, uh, but I still learned a lot of skills from Zeta on how to just really herd the cats, but in a nice way. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, and so tell us like your favorite part of, or you tell it first, tell us your favorite memory, uh, from your time in Zeta. Oh my gosh. I, I, oh man, that's really difficult. Um, I have a lot of memories, but the one I think that gave me the biggest proud mama feeling, uh, which is like how I felt as president was actually the convention at Hofstra. I mean, we had had this real, like I said, one of my goals in the beginning was like, let's get some chapters. Like it can't just be one. <laughs> you know, like I wanted it. And I saw how easy the process was once I did it myself too. And seeing all these chapters from all over the country, I mean, truly all over the country um, come and just meet each other and get along and just really impress me. I mean, convention's amazing in a lot of ways, but I always say it to my good friends whenever I get back from one. I'm like, oh my gosh, the future of America is okay. You know, like a lot of, I feel like every generation hates the one below it. Uh, I mean, okay, boomer, right? It's just like, it's an actual problem. And it's nice to get faith in the future. And you very rarely get to see the like awesome examples of young people. And Zeta just attracts amazing people. And getting to see them at that convention specifically was really amazing uh, because it was kind of uncharted territory. The previous convention we had just two years before then, there were five of us there. Yeah. I mean, that was it, you know, and that to see it explode in just, you know, 24 months uh, was really beautiful. And then subsequently, you know, the one in Orlando was also really uplifting because then you start worrying, oh no, I peaked, like hopefully we like stay at this level. And then UCF did an amazing job and everyone presented beautifully. And it was just, every time I go to convention, it's just my favorite memory. Yeah, so tagging on to that, uh, what are some ways that you have watched and seen uh, Zeta grow since you've been in this position? Oh my gosh, uh, it's like easier to list the ways it hasn't because um, I feel like almost everything has changed. I mean. The one of the things that I think has been really lovely is how communicative we've been with each other as a national council. Um, I know when I first joined national council, we would pretty much only talk once a month. Like we had those monthly calls because that was the only time we talked. Mm -hmm. 
and now I feel like, you know, we're emailing each other all the time or like texting each other random questions because it's just more efficient. And simultaneously, the interconnectivity with the campus chapters also. Mm -hmm. You know, um, a lot of people view National Council as this weird, superb being, being that just like floats in the clouds and there's just like random people. Uh, just the other day, I spoke at Hofstra and the person who picked me up uh, they were asking me, they're like, oh, okay, so like, is that your full-time job to be Zeta co-president? And I was like, no, <laughs> I have a full-time job. All of us are volunteer, uh, but like, they don't have an intimate knowledge of what all we do. Um, so even just the ability to reach out to us, I mean, chapters text me and Marissa all the time or email us and they know they can always come to us and forging that relationship and forming it and making people feel comfortable to do that is really lovely. And I, I think that's one of the biggest growth things that I've seen. It's just the overall communication method between national council as well as the chapters. Yeah. Um, so I think we're just about to wrap up here. Um, is there anything that you would like to leave us with um, to wrap out this whole week? Oh my golly. Uh, well, once again, it's just, it always makes me really happy to see what all the chapters are up to and how cool it is that they can take the concept of what Zeta is at its crux and then interpret it to apply to their specific campus or their community. Uh, that's just really lovely. And I have enjoyed seeing that every week in your newsletter is, you know, clicking on it and getting to know members, like better know a district, you know, it's like I could say better know a member and really feel connected to these people that I already had a connection with. I just didn't know exactly what it was. And I've really enjoyed that extensively. And looking forward, I'm just really excited for Boston. I know it's gonna be another phenomenal, phenomenal opportunity to gather together. So I'm pumped for that. And, and I just can't wait to Emerson to show off, you know? Yeah, I, I agree. I'm excited about that. Um, well, I, Marissa, I want to give you a chance to say um, anything you'd like to say as well. But thank you, Blair, for your time and um, answering those questions and speaking with us. Um, Marissa, do you quickly want to jump in and do you have anything that you'd want to add to wrap up this week? Sure. Um, I mean, I echo what Blair said. It's been a lot of fun just to see um virtually what everyone has been doing i think when blair and i talked about doing a virtual convention of sorts um blair and i are t generally always on the same page so <laughs> we were like let's do it it's 2019 why can't we connect more often and i think this is a good representation of how it very much is possible but i also echo what blair said sometimes people think that we are like weird beings not able to reach us or not accessible, um, but we're very much people too. Um, and the reason that we volunteer our time and National Council is because we have a love and a passion for Zeta that we didn't want to leave um, behind in school. And so um, I look forward to the next year, two years or so. Um, I look forward to working towards Emerson and seeing if we can solidify some more new chapters to bring with us up to Boston. Um, I think that's, you know, one of my biggest goals and also giving um, Zeta's a professional chapter to look to. Um, but I encourage anyone and everyone to reach out to me or Blair. I mean, you can always reach us at the president email, just just president at zetafiata.org. So it's super easy to remember. Um, but reach out anytime. I mean, Blair and I are here not only to help with Zeta, but, um, you know, it's nice to just have a friend to help with life and other things like that. So it's good to know that not alone so and i'm i'm just super proud of all the zetas i think it's just crazy to see how far chapters have come and i can't wait to see what the next wave of future in america <laughs> does um well thank you guys so much for being here today and all giving your time to this um i think i can speak for um anybody who's going to be watching this later that it's nice to um, put names to faces and, and hear about experiences from other Zetas um, and, and how it relates to them. And, you know, I think there's, there's clearly something that bonds us all, but we don't often get a chance to share that um, and what that bond means to each of us. So um, thank you again. <laughs>